exposing really like you were talking before, it's really just to get to the beliefs underneath all that. Yeah. So that it's like these things so that the then the thought that come then you can say, Oh that's a belief again, no, not that and move on. Being able to let it go because you really can just see that that's not where the mind needs to go anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like a contrast, like if you, can, if you can get there to see the value of the miracle and, and that is a choice, then the need for the exposing does fall away. I mean, I've used the example, I think like with Taoism, you know, Taoism looks at all, uses all these beautiful metaphors in nature about all the streams and the rivers that all merge into the ocean of oneness. But I always like the metaphor of a tree and I've used that with the tree and all the branches and all the leaves. When you first go on the spiritual journey and your mind is untrained, you're just dealing with the leaves. It's just a lot of leaves. It's all you've got is leaves. You know, people can come and say, all is God, all is one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a, a lot of leaves I'm working with here. You know, take your oneness somewhere else. You know, I don't want to hear about the oneness. I've got leaves, practical leaves. Leaves I've got to deal with every day. And so, and then you get off of the leaves and you do find that there's little branches underneath. And then as you go follow those branches in, they get bigger and bigger and thicker and thicker until, lo and behold, you finally come to a, a trunk, a single trunk. Oh my God, the zillions of leaves and there's just one trunk underneath them all. And the closer you can come to that, the, the closer you come to forgiveness, which is overlooking the trunk. Of course the Holy Spirit can overlook the trunk, so the Holy Spirit overlooks the leaves as well. It even says that in the Course, in the workbook, in the text, he says, you know, the Holy Spirit looks not to effects. The Holy Spirit looks not at the leaves. Because he has overlooked, he has overlooked the trunk, he has overlooked their cause. All these myriad effects are coming from an ego cause that isn't a real cause. So they're causeless. This world is causeless. Completely causeless. God didn't create it. it. It doesn't have a source. It's just a bunch of unreal effects that come from an unreal cause. But the Holy Spirit looks not to effects. I love that. I love that. It starts to really tell me what's really going on with healing. Looks not to effects because He has overlooked the cause. And he looks to the light of the atonement. He overlooks the, the ego right smack dab into the light of the atonement. He overlooks the air and, and locks right in on the correction. So you're coming to that in an experiential way. It's kind of like that movie Groundhog Day. How many times does he step in the, in the hole with the puddle? You know, his foot goes down in there. And he does it again, and he does it again, and he does it again. And yet at some point, he's there and he, he starts to do it. His foot starts to go down and he goes, and he pulls it back and he goes like this and he hops over the puddle. He has a moment of awareness. It doesn't matter how many times he's, he stepped into the puddle. It's not important anymore how many times he stepped into the puddle. He's aware that there's a puddle there. And he's not going to step into that. And isn't that beautiful? That's, that's when you start to feel the value of, of hopping over. You know, that's when you can choose the miracle. You're, you, you can come and overlook the trunk. You don't have to worry about the leaves. And I think, you know, that's what true healing is about. Because the exposing part is necessary as it is. I even hear course teachers that just absolutely hammer away at the exposing and give no talk at all to accepting the correction. They're so focused on exposing the error that they don't go beyond exposing the error to the actual teaching of forgiveness, which is accepting the correction. Jesus says, you are not responsible for the error. You are responsible for accepting the correction for the error. He also says, do not project the error to time. Because that's how you keep it. Which is, he's saying, don't, don't get into denial and projecting it to time. 
but really zoom into that correction. So, so when you find yourself to the point where you're just relaxed and peaceful and you're kind of, we'll say, above the battleground with it all, then the exposure doesn't really have meaning anymore. It, it's not like, you know, it's not like you're hanging in there and you've got to try to get into the exposing. It doesn't have meaning anymore. In fact, there are, are uh, there are peaks of mind, states of mind that you want to soar into. Uh, you remember, you might still remember Lisa. You know, she's just going, 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 soaring, soaring, soaring. You know, there was a time for expression sessions and a time for exposing, and then there's a time to ascend to the Father where toys are put away. Let's let us put away the toys and the trinkets and let's get about our Father's business, you know, which is ascension. The, the exposing, we can't say that it wasn't necessary. There was, it was very necessary as part of that seeming process. But after a while, the mind is actually attracted to love. It's really attracted to love. And, and when you yield to that attraction, you know, it's not this sense of, it's like a, a magnet that draws you, it's not, there's not the, the need for that exposure anymore. You're like taken in a, in a very direct way. That's wonderful too, That's, that should be incentive, you know. <laughs> let's get to the, let's get through the expo exposing part. This isn't something that you'll forever be doing. Yeah.